in the third quarter. But that's when the Lady Panthers caught fire, reeling off 19 straight points. And the fifth. Altogether, Harrison County was outscored in the fourth quarter, 24 to three. Junior Maddie Carson scored a career best 14 points and made four out of six from three point range as she almost single handedly kept her team in the ball game. Harrison County will play Nicholas County in the first round of the 38th District Tournament, which is going to be held up at Pendleton County. The Phillies and the Lady Jackets have met twice this year. The first time was in Carlisle back on January the 13th, a game that the Lady Jackets won 67 to 35. It was the same margin when the two teams played here two weeks later, a game that Nicholas County won by almost the identical score of the first game, but this time around 65-33. to 33. So I know the girls are practicing awfully hard, or at least as hard as they can with all the injuries and illnesses going through the club, but uh, it's coming up close, people. Week and a half. That's all that's left until the district tournament begins. Well, we'll take a break right now, come back and give you the starting lineup to tonight's game. Right after this, you're listening to the Cynthia and Hardy's pregame show on WCYN Sports. When you're sleeping, does your bedroom sound like the Daytona 500 when they drop the green flag? Are you sleepy during the day and find it hard to get your work done? You need to confer with Soil Home Medical, the sultan of silent sleep, for a cure to your snoring problem. Breathe better, sleep better, live better. See Sorrel today, in business since 1984. If you don't know where we're located, ask your neighbor. Feed your farm with Southern States Co-op in Cynthiana. Whether you need feed for dogs, chickens, pigs, rabbits, horses, or cattle, your local Southern States team can help you find the best nutrition program for all of the animals on the farm and around the house. Stop by Southern States on U.S. 27 south of Cynthiana. Let's take a look at the starters for both these teams. First for Bracken County, as we said, 13 and 12 on the year, coached by Troy Archibald. At a guard, a 5'8 junior, number one, Nicole Archibald. Archibald leads the team in scoring at 13.8 points a game. At another guard is Ella Johnson. She's a 5'7 senior that wears the number five, and she's also averaging in double figures at 10.6 points a game. The third guard is manned by Savannah Kelsch. Kelsch, a 5'3 junior who wears the number 14. She's averaging 4.6 points a game. One of the forwards is Brianna Bauer. She's a 5'6 junior that wears the number 35. She's also averaging 10.6 points a game. And at the other forward, a 5'9 senior, number 20, Kylie Lippert. Lippert averaging 3.7. So once again for Lady Bears, it'll be Archibald, Ella Johnson, Kelsch, Bauer, and Lippert. Offensively, Bracken County struggling this year, averaging just 50.3 points per game, but they're getting the job done on defense, giving up just 47.6 points per contest. Now the Harrison County Phillies, 9-19 on the air, coached by Bill Watson. At a guard, a 5-4 sophomore, number 21, Keeley Custard. Custard averaging 9.8 points per game. Another guard, Bailey Hudgens, 5-6 junior, that wears the number 23, and leads the team in scoring at 11.4 points a contest. At the third guard, Maddie Carson. Carson wears the number 20. She's a 5'2 junior. Coming off of that 14-point performance in Harrison County's loss to Augusta, she's raised her average to 3.1 points a game. At a forward, Marley Toll. Toll wears the number 42. She's a 5'9 sophomore who's averaging 1.9 points a game. And in the middle, a 6'1 freshman, number 25, Alyssa Williams. Williams averaging 1.3, so Coach Watson has decided to go big inside against the Lady Bears here tonight. So once again for the Phillies, it'll be Custard, Hudgens, Carson, Toll, and Williams. Offensively, Harrison County averaging 42.4 points per game. On defense, giving up 53.5 points. On paper, Bracken County about a 16-point favorite to win this game and improve on the year to 14-12. This will be the 63rd time that Harrison County and Bracken County have met each other in girls basketball. Bracken County leads the all-time series 35 to 27. 
here on the hilltop. Harrison County does have a winning record against the Lady Bears, winning 17 while losing 15. This is a series that began back in January of 1975 when Harrison County hosted Bracken and won that game 37 to 23. Last year when the two teams got together over in Brooksville, Harrison County lost that game 46 to 37. And the last time the two teams played here on the hilltop, <coughs> excuse me, was in the regional tournament back in 2020. No, it wasn't the regional tournament, just a regular game in 2020. The game Harrison County won 55 to 22, so this will be the first time in some four years that Harrison County and Blacken County have played each other here on the hilltop. Well, I mentioned the Phillies next game. The only game left in the regular season will be on Monday when we'll host Bourbon County. Meanwhile, the Thoroughbreds have three games left, two of them on the road, beginning with a game tomorrow in Brooksville as our guys will take on the Bracken County Polar Bears. Then on Saturday, this will be an afternoon affair. Harrison County will host Augusta. That's a 1.30 start, 12 o'clock start for the JV, and the Breds will finish up their regular season next Tuesday up at the Fieldhouse at Mason County, and then it's on to the district tournament. Also, real quick, now we'll take real quick later on. Right now, the Harrison County Air Force Junior ROTC is presenting the colors. We'll take a listen to the national anthem, after which we'll take a break and then come back for the tip-off of tonight's game between Harrison County and Bracken County, but right now, our Star Spangled Banner. what we call a breath of fresh air. All righty, back here on the hilltop. The starting five for both teams being introduced right now to the crowd that is gathered here. Uh, on Friday and Saturday, that's tomorrow and the next day, our boys team from our boys wrestling team will head to the state tournament up at All Tech Arena at the Kentucky Horse Park. Our guys have eight different wrestlers who will be competing, so a good chance to get a lot of points. 
at least hopefully that may be a state tournament championship. Meanwhile, on Saturday, our girls wrestling team will be participating in the girls state tournament, also at All Tech Arena at the Horse Park. We have 11 girls that will be going to be wrestling. That's a good thing because just like with the boys, the more people you have wrestling for you, the more chance you have to get a bunch of points. And our girls team has done a wonderful job this year, as has our boys team, but it seems like our girls team is the standard by which all the other wrestling teams in Kentucky are being measured. So best of luck to both our boys and girls wrestling teams at the state tournament, or state meet, I should say, up at the All Tech Arena this coming weekend. All right, jumping center for Bracken County will be Brianna Bauer. We'll see who goes up there for Harrison County as we're about to get this game underway. Small crowd here on the hilltop, but it is a weeknight. I think that winter break starts tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, which I may be. Alyssa Williams will be jumping center for Harrison County, getting the start tonight because of different people being injured and other people being sick. Tap is up and will be controlled by Harrison County. Harrison 9-19, Bracken 13-12. With the basketball, Custard across the timeline finds Hudgens. Hudgens looks over the man-to-man -man defense of Bracken. Gets it over on the wing on the far side to Custard. Keeley in the paint. Gets it on the wing to Carson. Now back up top to Hudgens. Hudgens steps inside the arc. Now back outside. Now rushes to the block. Her shot off the side of the backboard's no good. And the rebound's going to be pulled in by Lippert. So into the front court with the basketball, Bracken County. Left side three-point try is off the glass by Nicole Archibald. And if they're going to have that kind of luck all night long, it's going to be a long night for the Phillies. Hit high off of the glass. We played a minute. Harrison County down three to nothing. They have the basketball. Hudgens up top. Goes between the circles. Keeps on drifting before getting it on the wing to Carson. Carson down low to Toll in the corner. Finds Custard. Custard to Williams. Up top to Hudgens. Hudgens goes baseline. Her shot no good. And the rebound is going to be out of bounds. Last touched by the Phillies. So give the ball to the Polar Bears. If you're fed up, call Canup. Canup Law promises to treat you with care, respect, and dignity in whatever legal situation you're in. Visit them at CanupLaw.com. Walking the ball into the front court for her Lady Bears. Nicole Archibald gets to the left side. Long range to Kelsch. Kelsch into the paint to Johnson. Johnson double team. Kicks it over on the wing to Archibald for another three try. And this one rattles in. So she's had one high off the window and one that rattles in. But still the same. A 6 to nothing lead for the Lady Bears. 6.24 left in the first quarter. With the basketball, Custard, a floater on the baseline is no good. And down with the rebound will be Bauer. Up the floor come the Lady Bears. From the corner, a three by Johnson. Bounces off, and Custard will get the rebound for Harrison County. Harrison on the run. Hudgens from the block, puts one off the glass, and good. Gets Harrison County on the board. They trail 6-2 to two after Bailey's layup. 5.55 left. Here's another three fired in by Archibald again. Three threes for Nicole Archibald have put her team up 9-2. to two. She's loving her rims tonight for sure. With the basketball at the elbow in the front court, Toll lobs on the baseline to Hudgens. Hudgens gets it inside to Williams. Her shot's no good. And Johnson with the rebound for Bracken. Johnson. On the right side, long range in front of the stable. Gets it to Archibald for another free try. And for the fourth time in the game, she buries the tray. This time from the left corner as timeout is called. But Nicole Archibald has given his te her team a 12-2 lead. Just a 30-second timeout. So we'll keep it right here as I'm sure that in the huddle, Coach Watson redevising maybe what he wanted to do defensively against Nicole Archibald, and right now I think it'd be a good job, good idea to get her on somebody. Stockyards Bank and Trust has competitive home equity loans and home equity lines of credit. Ask a lender to learn more. That's Stockyards Bank and Trust, member FDIC, equal housing lender. 12 to 2. First four times down the floor, Bracken County has gotten the ball to Archibald, and all four times she has responded with a three-pointer. Facing full court pressure out of the timeout. Custard gets the ball inbounds to Toll. Toll 
Still has her dribble. Now takes it and gets it over the head of Carson and out of bounds. So on the turnover, give the ball back to the Lady Bears. Not a good way to start. Just kind of extending that terrible fourth quarter against Augusta when they got outscored 24 to three. Bleeding onto this game, I'm afraid. Archibald, the pass to the left side to Kelsch. Her three-point try is no good. And the ball is gonna be picked up by Hudgens in the front court. She tries a pass to Carson, but this time it's beyond Maddie's reach. Second consecutive trip with a turnover. Gives the ball back to Bracken. 12 to two they lead. Under five to go in the first quarter. Getting the ball into the front court will be Archibald over on the far sideline. Moves to the top of the key where she'll hand the ball to Johnson. Johnson over on the far side to Bauer. Bauer gets the ball to Johnson who flies in and puts it up in. That's actually Kelsch who made that shot. Savannah Kelsch with a layup. Puts her team up 14 to two. 429 left in the first quarter. Carson will bring the ball to the front court herself this time. Lobs a pass, knocked away. Loose ball picked up by Bauer. Bauer goes all the way the other way and lays it up and in. Yes. Already it looks like Brighton County might be running away with this one as they lead 16 to two. And we ain't even got to the midway point of the first quarter yet. In the front court with the basketball, an intended pass to Williams is off of Alyssa's hands out of bounds. So four straight trips with a turnover. And we'll have a full timeout called by Harrison. We'll take it as well. Four or five left to go in the first quarter. Your score, Bracken County 16, Harrison County 2. You're listening to Philly Basketball on WC Wayne Sports. As we get back to action here on the hilltop, Harrison County already a pretty good sized hill to climb as they trail 16 to two with 405 left to go in the first quarter. And now the timeout, Bracken has the basketball. Archibald, who already has four threes, gets the ball on the left side, long range to Kelsch. Kelsch guarded by Carson. Now between the circles, she'll find Lippert. Lippert hands the ball to Archibald at the top of the key. On a weave, she'll give the ball to Kelsch. From the right elbow, Kelsch's jump shot is no good. And Williams comes down with the rebound for Harrison County. With the ball, Custer dishes it off on the baseline to Hudgens, back on the wing to Custer again. Keeley goes to the right elbow, thought about a shot, and should have gone ahead and taken it. Five straight turnover-filled possessions for Harrison County. Up the court with the basketball will come Archibald once again. Gets to the left side, long range, and dumps it into the paint. Baseline shot put up and no good by Kels. Rebound, oh, is going to be pulled in by Archibald. She goes back up and in. 14 points for Archibald. Puts her team up 18-2. to two. After that put back, 3.04 on the clock here in the first quarter. With the basketball, Custer inside the center circle. Dribbles to the left side where she'll get the ball to Hudgens. Hudgens lobs the ball to Toll. Toll from the block, up and under move is no good. And down with the rebound this time will be Lippert. Up the floor, Archibald from the left elbow, jump shot, swish. 16 first quarter points for Nicole Archibald and a 20 to two lead for the Lady Bears. 2.36 left to go in the first quarter. Toll gives the ball to Carson. Carson travels. Yikes. Six of our last seven possessions have ended up being turnovers. Meanwhile, Bracken County is just scoring right along. 
2.29 left to go in the first quarter. And the crowd is pretty much silent. From the right side, long range Kelsch. She'll throw it inside and picked off by Williams. First turnover for Bracken in the game. Hudgens will bring it into the front court. She'll be met there by Johnson. Drifting to the left side as Hudgens gets it to Carson over there on the far hash mark. Carson goes baseline, cut off. She's picked up her dribble, needing some help. She'll get it to the left elbow to Custard. Custard down low to Hudgens, ball fake. Hudgens dishes it inside to Williams, and Williams is going to be tied up by Lippert. Possession arrow will give the ball back to Bracken County. Quickly into the ball game for Harrison County, Kaylee Banks. Banks, a 5'4", eighth grader, averaging a half a point a game. Inbounds pass comes to Archibald, who will walk the ball up the floor. At El Paracutin, daily lunch specials and the always popular buffet are calling your name. Plan a visit soon to the Harrison Square and enjoy a meal at El Paracutin. Archibald gets it between the circles now to Johnson. Johnson dribbles to the left side, gets it back on top to Kelsch. Fires it into the corner, wide open is Bauer, but misses the three-point try. But the rebound is going to be picked up by Lippert. Here's a three by Archibald, no good. But once again, the rebound is chased down by Lady Bear. This time Bauer gets it back to Archibald, whose shot is no good. Rebound put back up by Lippert is no good. Another shot is no good by Kelsch. And the next ball is going to be smacked out of bounds off of Bracken County. In the game for Harrison County, Emma Wadlow. Wadlow, a 5'9 sophomore, averaging .9 points per game. Facing full court pressure, Custard inbounds the ball to Wadlow. Harrison County down 20-2 with a minute left to go in the first quarter. Cross timeline comes Custard inside the center circle. Now backs it back out again before attacking to the top of the key. Ball's knocked away. Loose ball in the backcourt is going to be out of bounds off of Bracken County. So Harrison will maintain possession. From in front of the stable, Custard will inbounds the ball to Hudgens. Under a minute to go in a forgettable first quarter for the Phillies. Across the timeline comes Hudgens, who has the only two points for Harrison County so far. Gets to the left side, long range to Custard. Up top to Wadlow. And now we're going to have contact as Alyssa Williams goes to the ground, fouled by Kylie Lippert. That'll be Lippert's first personal. Like a good neighbor, Joe Cochran with State Farm is there. Get a new home or auto quote with Joe by calling 859-234-3813. Joe always supports the Bres and Phillies from our own baseline. Hudgens looking to get the ball in bounds. It's off of the fingertips of Brianna Bauer and out of bounds, so Harrison County will maintain possession. 40 seconds left here in the first quarter. Hudgens once again gets the ball in bounds to Custard. Lobs it back to Hudgens, who's going to be fouled from behind by Bauer. That'll be Bauer's first personal foul. Just a common foul. So Banks will inbounds the ball from her own baseline. Looking, gets it in the corner. Hudgens, she'll fire a three. Good. Our first cup ball three-pointer. Scored by Bailey Hudgens. Gets Harrison County back to within a 20-5 to score with 28 seconds left to go in the first quarter. And now we're going to have a tie-up underneath the Bracken basket. Alternating possession arrow will give the ball back to the Phillies. Facing full court pressure, Custard gets the ball inbounds to Williams, goes through her hands though and out of bounds. So after the eighth turnover of the first quarter by Harrison County, Bracken with plenty of time and 26 seconds on the clock here in the first quarter, they lead 20 to five. From the far sideline, Bauer gets it into the hands of Archibald who will yo-yo the ball inside the center circle before drifting to the right side being tracked by Custard. Archibald at the top of the key to the left side, long range to Johnson. Johnson moves to the right elbow in the corner, finds Bauer. Bauer back on the wing to Johnson with eight seconds left. She'll get it between the circles of Kelsch from the right side. A shot put up by Bauer from about 15 is a no good. Rebound pulled by Hudgens. Her three-quarter court shot at the buzzer is no good. And that is the way that the first quarter will end with your score. Harrison County trailing Bracken County 20 to 5. You're listening to Philly Basketball on WCYN Sports.
Alrighty, out of the first quarter, Harris County trailing 20 to five. Start the second period, Bracken County will have the ball. Archibald, who has 14 points, including four three-pointers, gets to the right side. Here's a three put up, no good, and the rebound is going to be saved from going out of bounds by Bauer. She'll get it out on the wing to Bauer over in front of the stable. Up top now to Archibald. Archibald with the ball over her head. Slings it to Bauer on the right side. Bauer drives baseline. Gets it in the paint. Shot from about 10 feet away by Lippert is good. First points by Kylie Lippert. And Harrison County back down by 17 at 22 to 5. And now a steal by Bracken County. Archibald on the left side. Puts up another three-point try. Good. 19 points for Nicole Archibald. Puts her team ahead 25 to five. With the basketball against full court pressures, Hudgens gets it to Custard. Custard between a couple of Lady Bears goes to the right elbow and may have traveled, no call. That then throws the ball away. Up the floor quickly, shot put up no good by Johnson, but she's fouled and will go to the line for two. Fouls on Hudgens. That'll be Bailey's first. So Johnson at the line for the first time tonight. On the year, she is a 66% free throw shooter. First one's on the way and rattles in. Molly Toll returns for Harrison County, who now trails 26 to five. Also Carson back in the game as well. Second free throw for Johnson upcoming. The senior eyes the bucket. Her free throw's up and good. Now we got a sub coming in for Bracken County. That is Kendall Johnson. Kendall Johnson, a five foot eighth grader, averaging 2.2 points a game. Down by 22, Custard will bring the ball into the front court. Goes over to the left side, long range. Now makes a move against Kaylee Sharp, who's also getting the game for Bracken. Sharp, a 5'6", 8th grader, averaging 5.6 points a game. Here's a shot by Wadlow that's no good, but she's fouled. Fouls will be called on Bauer. That'll be Brianna Bauer's second. So Wadlow at the line on the air, a 67% free throw shooter. First free throw is off to the left and short as well. She'll have another one coming, however, to try to make it a 21-point game with 6.30 left to go in the first half. Second free throw by number 45 is going to spin out. A little too much English on it. Rebound pulled in by Johnson. That's Ella Johnson. And a foul is going to be called against Custard. So Bracken County with the ball and the comfortable 22-point advantage at 27-5. Archibald will walk the ball into the front court against now a 2-3 Harrison County zone. Let's see if that works any better. Pass to the far sideline to Ella Johnson. Back up top to Archibald. To this side, she'll find Sharp. Sharp tries to pass inside. It's going to be stolen by Wadlow. And then Emma has the ball stolen back away from her. And a frustration foul ensues. That'll be Wadlow's first personal. Coming in the game for Bracken. Returning will be Kylie Lippert. Also, Hudgens will return to the floor for Harrison County. She'll come in for Banks. From her own baseline, Archibald launches the ball up top to Kaylee Sharp. Sharp in the corner to Johnson. Now, here's a three by Johnson. Good. Five points for Ella Johnson. And the lead grows to 30 to five. Harrison County down, 5.53 left to go in the first half with the basketball, Custard. Gets in the front court on the near side. Ball knocked away from behind, and the loose ball picked up by Archibald. Three on one break, Archibald takes it, misses the shot. Rebound put back is no good by Lippert, but she's going to be fouled and will go to the line. Here's the foul for 23, Hutchins. The line for bracket for 20, Lippert. Lippert at the line for the first time tonight on the year. She is a 50% free throw shooter. First one's on the way and bounces off. No good. In the game now for Harrison County, Millie Hatfield. Hatfield, a 5'9 sophomore, averaging 0.4 points per game. 
Second free throw for Lippert is on the way and good. So makes one out of two and increases her team's lead to 31 to five. 5.37 left to go in the first half. With the basketball, Hudgens fighting a double team. Gets it in the front court to the far hash. Mark to Custard. Custard spins around, finds Hatfield in the corner. Now back up top to Hudgens. Hudgens gives the ball back to Hatfield. Now to the right side. A bad pass is picked off by Archibald. Two on one break. Archibald goes all the way, makes the shot, and she is fouled. And will have a chance at the old-fashioned three-point play as Carson picks up the foul. 33 to five, now your score. With 5.17 on the clock. And Archibald's free throw is no good. Toll with the rebound for Harrison County. She'll get the ball to Custard with 5.11 on the clock here in the first half. Custard falls down, but it's gonna be because she was tripped by Kaylee Sharp. That'll be Kaylee Sharp's first personal. Well, they've been here for Farmers since 1916, and they're here for you now. Farm Credit in America. Contact Mike Furnish at 859-254-2741 or visit efarmcredit.com from the far sideline, Hatfield. Near the hash mark, gets it inbounds, and now knocked out of bounds by Kaylee Sharp. Gotta have crisper passes, girls. Back in the game, Bowery returns for Bracken County. Also, Kelsch comes back on the floor as well. 33-5. It's been all bracken all the way. Inbounds pass comes to Custard. Custard will walk the ball back across the timeline. Shifts it to the right elbow to Toll. Up top to Carson on a weave to Hudgens at the top of the key. Hudgens reverses her dribble, gets it in the paint. On the baseline to Hatfield, a 10-footer goes about 12 feet out of bounds off of Harrison County. So bracken will get the ball back. Cynthia and the Hardys want you to visit them for breakfast, lunch, or dinner on US 27 South. They've got the best burgers in town. That's Hardys and Cynthiana. Walking the ball up the floor will come Archibald. 21 points for the junior. Came in averaging 14. Archibald near the top of the key. Now gets it inside. Ball knocked away. And the loose ball picked up by Carson. Carson to Custard. Custard on the wing to Hudgens for a three. Short. And the rebound is going to be pulled in by Archibald. In the front court, left elbow jump shot by Archibald is just a bit off the mark. And the rebound is going to be put up and in by Kelsch. Yeah. Or Bauer, excuse me. Four points for Brianna Bauer on the putback. Makes it 35 to 5. And a timeout on the floor. It'll be just a 30-second timeout by Harrison County, so we'll keep it right here. Four minutes and two seconds left on the clock here in the first half, and Harrison County trailing 35-5. to Are you ready to do a commercial? Pull down your little mic thing so people can hear you. And then all you have to say is one word. Do you have a big group to feed? The Beast Pizza is great for birthdays and parties. Just dial 235-7627 right now. That's 235. Snap. Ah, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. You're a rookie. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get you and Ryan together, and y'all can practice sometimes. There you go. All right, we have a timeout. Harrison with the basketball facing full court pressure. It backs off as soon as the ball comes in bounds to Hudgens, though. Hudgens in the front court on the far side of the midcourt circle. Now drifts to the hash mark before passing it in the corner to Hatfield. Hatfield tries a pass. It's knocked away and stolen by Bracken County. Now a foul is going to be committed by Hatfield on Bauer. But it's just a common foul. Two shot. Foul shot for Bauer. Bauer on the season, a 53% free throw shooter. Makes the first as Williams will come back in for Harrison County. 36-5. to 5. 3.45 left to the, of the first half. Free throw is up and no good. And the rebound is pulled in by Toll. In the front court come the Phillies with Custard at the point. 
Custard inside the arc on the left side. Gets the ball to Carson at the foul line. Carson up top between the circles. The toll ball is dropped. And we'll have a jump ball. Possession arrow will keep the ball in Harrison County's hands, however. This game's like it's in slow motion. It's like a car accident that you can't stop. You can't do anything about, but it just keeps happening. Coming in now, Kendall Johnson for Bracken County again. Carson will inbounds the ball from the hash mark just to the left of the Bracken bench into Custard. Custard. Goes to the top of the key. Now backs it up near the center circle before lobbing it on the elbow to Toll. Toll hands the ball to Carson, who on weave gives the ball to Hudgens. Hudgens inside the arc, gets it in the corner to Custard. Custard lobs the ball up top to Toll. Now back to center circle to Hudgens. She'll fire it into the paint to Williams. Williams to the left side to Carson for a three. Good! Maddie Carson with the Knupp Law three-pointer. Gets Harrison County back to within 28 at 36-8. With two minutes and 57 seconds left to go in the first half. But now on the opposite side of the floor, a foul is going to be called on Williams. Elson Archibald back to the line where she's 0 for 1. Overall on the air, a 57% free throw shooter. First free throw this time is good. She has 22 points. Harrison County has 8 Second free throw with 2.55 on the clock is also going to be good. Extending the lead for the Lady Bears to 38-8. to eight. Against full court pressure, inbounds pass comes to Custard. And now we're going to have a foul called on Bracken County's Kendall Johnson. That'll be her first. Well, the Harrison County Thoroughbreds will make the return trip to Brooksville tomorrow night. Take on the Bracken County Polar Bears. 6 o'clock JV game, 7.30 game time for the varsity. And we hope we don't have too much snow. Here's a pass intended for Carson. A little too hot to handle. Goes out of bounds. As Harrison County picks up its 15th turnover of the first half. Archibald looks over to Coach Archibald before stepping across the timeline in the middle of the floor. Just to the left side, long range. Gets the ball on the baseline to Kelsch. Her 12-footer is no good. Long rebound goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Lady Bears. Custard will inbounds the pass where she'll find Hudgens. Harrison County fell behind early and often in this game, 20-2 in the first quarter. Been playing catch up ever since. Hudgens goes to the block. Her shot off the glass is no good. Rebound pulled in by Custard. As Custard tries to go back to the basket, we we'll have a foul call. No, nope, a turnover. So give the ball back to Bracken County. 38 to 8. 213 left to go in the first half. Across the timeline comes Archibald. Gets it. Down low, knocked away. Loose ball picked up by Hudgens. She'll go coast to coast and lays it up and in. Nice steal and bucket by Hudgens. Makes it a 38 to 10 score. A minute 52 left in this first half a play. Here's a pass on the left side to Kelsch. Gets it up top, a three fired up by Ella Johnson is good. Second tray of the second quarter for Ella Johnson. Puts her team up 41 to 10 with a minute and a half left to go in the first half. Custard comes across the timeline with the ball on the left elbow. Now launches one from a runner status about 12 feet away. Rebound still being fought for as four girls hit the ground. And we're going to have a tie up with the alternating possession arrow. Giving the ball back to Bracken. Bracken came into this game 13 and 12. And with 116 left in the first half, lead 41 to 10. Archibald with the basketball now on the left side. Goes to the top of the key where she'll dish it off to Ella Johnson. Ella to the block to the glass. Her shot too hard off the glass. No good. Rebound put back up. No good again. And now with the rebound, Harrison County in the front court. Hudgens to the basket. Puts it up and in. Nine points for Bailey here in the first half. Makes it 41 to 12. 45 seconds on the clock. 
Back in the ball up will be Archibald as she takes a look at the clock and sees there's 37 seconds on it. Bracken may go for the last shot of the quarter over the half as well. With the basketball, Ella Johnson hands it off on a weave at the top of the key to Kelsch. Kelsch in turn gives the ball to Archibald. Archibald gives it back to Ella Johnson on a weave at the top of the key to Kelsch. Kelsch back to Archibald, 19 seconds left. This all going on beyond the perimeter. Ella Johnson gives the ball to Kelsch. Kelsch back up top to Archibald once again. She'll back it up inside the center circle. Lobs to the left side to Ella Johnson for a long three good. Third tray of the second quarter by Ella Johnson. And that is the way that the first half will end with your score. Oh, your score. Bracken County 44, Harrison County 12. It's been all Bracken all the way. We'll uh, <laughs> go now to our halftime show, sponsored by Joe Cochran out at State Farm. We'll go over all the scoring and stats from this first half of play, coming up right after this timeout. But once again, your halftime score, Bracken County 44, Harrison County 12. You're listening to Philly Basketball on WCYN Sports. Some members of the 2020 10th Region Champion Harrison County Phillies here to be honored, along with Cameron Whitaker, more specifically Cameron, because she was one of our seven 2,000 point scorers in Harrison County history. So good to see her out there as well. Game though not going too well. It's Harrison County trails 44 to 12 at the half. Bracken County got out of the gates so quickly they almost lapped the Phillies after the first turnaround of the track. 20 to 2 was the score with two and a half minutes left to score left to go in the first quarter. 
Eventually that lead would grow to as many as the present 32 points. Taking a look at the individual scoring, first for, for uh, Black and County, Nicole Archibald already having maybe a career day for her with 23 points, including five three-pointers. 11 points for Ella Johnson, including three trays. Also scoring for the Lady Bears, Brianna Bauer has five. Kylie Lippert has three. And Savannah Kelsch has a couple. Also playing but not scoring for Bracken in the first half for Kaylee Sharp and Kendall Johnson. Meanwhile, Harrison County paced by Bailey Hudgens' is nine, including a three. And Maddie Carson has a three-pointer as well. Those are the only two Phillies who scored in the first half. Also playing but not scoring, Keely Custard, Millie Hatfield, Alyssa Williams, Kaylee Banks, Marley Toll, and Emma Wadlow. We'll take a break, come back and take a look at the team stats right after this. Once again, your halftime score. Bracken County 44, Harrison County 12. You're listening to the Joe Cochran at State Farm Halftime Show on WCYN Sports. You think a cardiac event will never happen to you, but when it does, you need quality heart care close to home. At Harrison Memorial Hospital in Cynthiana, they offer a cardiac catheterization lab that's open 24-7 and two full-time cardiologists on staff, all mere minutes away. HMH's interventional heart specialist, Dr. Matthew Shotwell, uses a team approach to effectively treat acute heart attacks quickly. Dr. Yaz Dabul, trained in advanced cardiac imaging, offers a full range of... back here at the Hilltop. Well, Cameron Wicker and Noel Kearns are being honored. Of course, Noel, the all-time leading scorer in Harrison County history, could use some of her points right now. The stats, as you might imagine, heavily on the favor of Bracken County. In the first half, the Lady Bears hit 50% of their shots on 15 out of 30, and incredibly, 8 of 13 from beyond three-point range. I say that is very unusual because so far on the year, the Lady Bears were hitting just 26% from beyond the arc. Meanwhile, Harrison County, just 5 out of 15 from the floor. That's 33.3%. They were 2 of 4 from beyond the perimeter. From the free throw line, Harrison County only went there twice and missed both, while Bracken County was 6 of 9 from the charity stripe at 66.7%. Turnovers, big part of the game. 16 turnovers committed by Harrison County. Bracken County committed just five. And the rebounding battle was won by Bracken County as well, 14 to eight. Eight offensive and six defensive rebounds for the Lady Bears. They were paced in that department by Kylie Lippert's five. Meanwhile, two offensive and six defensive rebounds for the Phillies. They were led by Marley Toll, who has three rebounds here at the break. So there are your stats as they are. Harrison County needing a miracle in the third quarter. We'll take a break and come back with the third quarter handoff right after this timeout. Once again, your halftime score, Bracken County 44, Harrison County 12. You've been listening to the Joe Cochran out at State Farm Halftime Show on WCYN Sports.
Alrighty, back here at the Hilltop. We're about to begin the third quarter of play with Harrison County trailing 44 to 12. Phillies will have the basketball to begin the third quarter. Just kind of chip away. Don't have to make it 32 points all in one trip. But Bracken County is looking awfully good tonight, especially Nicole Archibald. 23 points, a couple of rebounds. Carson will inbounds the ball to Custard. Gets it to Keeley in the backcourt. And we'll get this thing started. Once again, man-to-man -man defense by the Lady Bears. Over on the far side, Hudgens has it up top. Now over to the far side to Toll long range. Toll inside to Williams. Williams goes around the double team and puts it up and in. Nice play that time by Alyssa. And she gets her name into the scorebook. And Harrison County back to within 30 at 44 to 14. Here in the early stages of the third quarter. Archibald with the basketball now. Over on the right side, she'll hand it off to Kelsch. Kelsch in between the circles to Bauer. Bauer up top to Johnson. Johnson now to Archibald. It steps inside the arc. Now back outside the arc in front of her own bench. She'll hand it to Bauer. Bauer to the left elbow. Kicks it over into the corner to Kelsch. Kelsch up top now to Ella Johnson. Ella Johnson dribbles it over to the far sideline. Brighton County just bleeding the ball right now. Gets it over on the right side. Long range to Archibald once again. Archibald inside the center circle. Pass to the far hash mark to Ella Johnson. Ella Johnson now in between the circles finds Lippert. Lippert to Archibald on the right side. Goes to the top of the key before handing it off to Ella Johnson. Over on the right side finds Kelsch. Kelsch goes baseline, puts a shot off from the block. It bounces in there. Four points now for Savannah Kelsch. Puts the Lady Bears up 46 to 14. 631 on the clock here in the third quarter. Across the timeline comes Custard. Custard has yet to score in this game. Gets the ball to Hudgens. Hudgens lobs it into Williams. Williams fans it on the right side to Carson for three. Good. Give the assist to Williams. Uh, points to Maddie Carson. And Harrison County with the second Canup Law three-pointer of the day for Maddie. Gets her team back to win a 46-17 score. 6.03 left. Here's a three from the right side by Ella Johnson. Barely grazes the net. And coming up with the rebound will be Williams. Williams gives the ball to Custard. Custard across the timeline. Now surveys the defense. Backs it up inside the center circle before she makes a dash inside the arc on the left side. Now she'll back it back out again to reset. Gets to the right side. Long range to Carson in front of the stable. Now to Hudgens in the paint to Toll. Toll up and under move. Her shot's no good, but she's fouled. That foul is going to be on Bauer, and that will be Bauer's third. If you're fed up, call Canup. Canup Law promises to treat you with care, respect, and dignity in whatever legal situation you're in. Visit them at canuplaw.com. Going to the line will be Marley Toll, who on the season is a 50% free throw shooter, makes her first. So Marley gets her name in the scorebook as well. 46 to 18 with 5.30 left. And the second free throw is no good. Rebound by Custer. Puts it up and in. Nice job that time by Keeley. And she gets both the offensive rebound and her first points of the night. Harrison up. Or Harrison down 46 to 20. 5.15 left in the third quarter. In the front court, Archibald has it. A little push off there. No call. She'll back it back. Near the center circle. Archibald gets to the left side. Long range to the hands of Kelsch. Kelsch goes to the elbow before passing it on the near side to Ella Johnson. Now on the baseline to Lippert. Lippert up top to the foul line. Jump shot by Bowers. Off the glass and good. Brianna Bauer with a short jumper. Puts her team up 48 to 20. 4.43 left to go in the third quarter. With the basketball, Harrison County's Custard with it. Custard backs it back out. Now goes between the circles. Gets it to the elbow on the corner. Finds Toll. Back on the wing to Carson long range. Carson back to Toll in the corner. She'll get it back up top to Hudgens. Hudgens races into the paint. Spins. Ball knocked away. Custard picks up the loose ball. Goes to the left elbow. Jump shot. Bounces in. And will the, there's a foul underneath the basket. Will a shot count? That's the question. 
they're going to get together to see if, okay, Bailey Hudgens' shot's good, but it also a foul on Millie Hatfield under the bench, under the uh, basket. So Bailey with 11 points, makes it 48 to 22 as we approach the midway point of the third quarter. With the basketball, Archibald on the right side, gets it to the top of the key to Ella Johnson. Ella Johnson now a bounce pass this way to Lippert. Lippert, who has dared to take that three, did not. Took it back between the circles to Archibald. To the left side, long range finds Kelsch. Kelsch lobs the ball to the near side to Lippert. And now with the basketball is Bauer, and Bauer is going to be fouled by Williams. It'll be Elsa, Alyssa Williams' second personal foul. Coming in now for Bracken County, Kaylee Sharp returns. Stockyards Bank and Trust has competitive home equity loans and home equity lines of credit. Ask a banker to learn more that Stockyards Bank and Trust, member of FDIC, equal housing lender. Coming in now for Harrison, Lauren Hicks. Hicks, a 5'6 sophomore, averaging 1.6. Inbounds pass comes to Kaylee Sharp. Here's a pass down low intended for Ella Johnson. It goes off of Johnson's hands out of bounds. Only the sixth turnover of the night for Bracken County. Up to 3.41 left to go in the third, and Harrison County down 48-22. to Phillies will face full court pressure. With the basketball is Hudgens. Comes up the near sideline into the front court. Now dishes it off to Toll. Her shot is good. Toll with three points now. Makes it 48-24. to Here's a three from the corner. No good. And the long rebound is going to be picked up by Ella Johnson. Her shot's no good. And now coming down with the rebound was Lippert. And she's going to be fouled. So Lippert at the line. She's one for two there tonight. Has three points, which is right at her season's average. First free throw is good. Stands that lead back to 25 at 49 to 24. With 316 left. Second fifth free throw by Lippert is no good. Ella Johnson with the rebound. Her putback is no good, but she's going to be fouled. At the line, Ella Johnson. She's two for two from the line tonight. Those coming back in the second quarter when she scored all 11 of her points. But now scores one more here as her first free throw is good. Kendall Johnson back in the game for Bracken. We now lead 50 to 24 with 314 left. Second free throw is also good by Ella Johnson, making it 51 to 24. With the basketball in the backcourt is Hudgens. And she's going to be fouled by Kendall Johnson going for the steal. Carson will inbounds the ball against full court pressure. Carson looking, lobs in to Toll. Toll back to Carson, Carson to Custard. Who will bring the ball to the front court. Custard at the left elbow, jumper off the flange. Long rebound is gonna be picked up by Archibald who comes into the front court, stops and pops from three point range. No good, too long. And the ball is gonna hit off of the support structure. So give the ball back to the Phillies. At El Paracutin, daily lunch specials at the always popular buffet are calling your name. Plan a visit soon to the Harrison Square and enjoy a meal at El Paracutin. Now on the inbounds pass, we're going to have a jump ball called and the possession arrow will give the ball back to Bracken County. 17 turnovers now on the night for the Phillies. From her own baseline, Kendall Johnson gets it into Bauer. Bauer against the defense of Hicks. Now we'll get it back up top to Ella Johnson in between the circles now to Kendall Johnson. Here's a pass to no one in particular that goes into the backcourt. So uh, over and back penalty against Bracken County. Back of the game, Savannah Kelsch returns for the Lady Bears. Also Banks back in for Harrison County. Like a good neighbor, Joe Cochran with State Farm is there. Get a new home or auto quote with Joe by calling 859-234-3813. Joe always supports the Breds and Phillies. Two and a half left to go in the third. Custard with the basketball. Our team down 51-24. Gets to Hicks. 
Wrap around pass to Hudgens. Hudgens to Custard on the block. Puts up a shot, no good, but she's fouled. And Keeley will go to the line. Foul's gonna be on Archibald. That'll be Nicole Archibald's first. Custard at the line for the first time tonight on the year, a 65% free throw shooter. Sophomore's first free try is in and out. Second free throw upcoming. But first checking back in will be Kylie Lippert for Bracken. Second free throw for Custard is on the way and good. Makes the score 51 to 25. 224 left to go in the quarter. And now here's a pass knocked out of bounds by Custard into the Bracken County bench. From the hash mark just to the left of that bench from where we're sitting, Archibald will trigger the inbounds pass. Lobs it to the top of the key to Kelsch. Kelsch back on the wing to Archibald again. Archibald goes baseline, tries a pass, and it's going to be beyond the outreach hand of Kylie Lippert for the third turnover of the third quarter on Bracken after having five through the first 16 minutes. Banks will inbounds the ball against full court pressure to Custard. Custard to Hudgens. Hudgens being guarded in the backcourt by Ella Johnson. 51-25 your score. Bracken County with the lead. Hudgens with the basketball for Harris County inside the center circle. Now dishes it off. Ball knocked away and the loose ball is picked up by Bracken. Outlet pass to Kelsch who lays it up and in. Six points for Savannah Kelsch. And Harrison County now trails 53 to 25. 142 left to go in the third. Custard up the floor. Gets to the left elbow. Tries to pass the toe, but it's knocked away and the loose ball picked up by Archibald. Archibald in the front court. Gets it in the paint to Bauer. Bauer to the basket. Lays it up and good. That's nine points for Bauer now. To make the score 55 to 25. Timeout called by Harrison County. We'll take it as well. 124 left in the third. Your score. Bracken County 55. Harrison County 25. You're listening to Philly Basketball on WC Wayne Sports. All righty, out of the timeout. Facing full court pressure. Toll's pass up to Hicks. Hicks back to Toll, still in the backcourt. Now gets the ball to Custer. We're going to have to race it across the line. Custer gets across the midcourt stripe in the center circle. Gets it down low to Wadlow, who's back in. Her shot's no good. Toll's putback is also no good. But now two teams fighting for that same rebound. And we'll have a tie-up with Harrison County retaining possession. From her own baseline, Hicks will trigger the inbounds pass. Gets it to Custard on the baseline. Custard tries to pass the ball back inside, but it's going to be knocked out of bounds by Bracken County. Just a little over a minute to go in the third. Back in the game, Ella Johnson returns. She'll come in for Kendall Johnson. Hicks once again trying to get the ball in bounds. Gets it in between the circles of Banks. Banks back to Hicks. Hicks floats a pass that's over everybody's head now to bounds makes an even 20 turnovers all the night for the Phillies 101 left in the third quarter 55 25 Harrison County trailed 44 to 12 at the half break with the basketball Bauer goes down to the block now backs it back out again in front of her own bench got us on the wing to Archibald Archibald 23 points all coming in the first half 
Goes to the top of the key, pass to the left side to Ella Johnson. Skip pass to the near side. Here's a shot put up and no good. Rebound is pulled in by Hicks. First rebound of the night on Lauren. And now a steal by the Lady Bears. In the front court with the basketball. Archibald up top, a three fired up and no good. Rebound, put back up and in. This time by Ella Johnson, who will have a chance at the old-fashioned three-point play. Puts her team up 57-25 to with 21 seconds on the clock. Free throw up by Johnson and good as she is now a perfect five for five from the line. 58-25 to your score. Bracken County has led all the way and big. With the basketball, Custard across the timeline. Eyes down her defender, Savannah Kelsch. Now makes a move to the right elbow. A floater in the lane is good. Nice job by Keeley. For her fifth point, one second left. Midcourt shot by Bauer is no good. And that's the way the third quarter will end with your score. Oh, your score. Bracken County 58, Harrison County 27. You're listening to Philly Basketball on WCYN Sports. Sometimes. All right, as we get back to action, eight minutes left to go in this thing, and Bracken County has the basketball, leading 58 to 27. Archibald with the basketball inside the center circle now makes her move to the wing, where she'll hand it off to Ella Johnson. Ella Johnson, in turn, gives the ball to Kelsch to the foul line. Kelsch backdoor cut to Archibald, who goes in and lays it up and in. 25 points now for Nicole Archibald on the layup, which makes the score 60 to 27 with seven and a half left. With the basketball, Hudgens crosses over her dribble, takes it inside the arc on the left side, and as she splits the double team, she's gonna be fouled by Ella Johnson. That'll be Ella Johnson's first from her own baseline to trigger the inbounds pass will be Lauren Hicks. Hicks looking, lobs it on the wing to Hudgens. Hudgens back inside to Toll. Toll in the paint, up and under, shot no good. I believe that foul is going to be on Bauer. And nope, it's going to actually be called on Lippert. It'll be her second. From the free throw line, Toll is one for two today. First free throw by the sophomore is going to roll off. She'll have another, however. 7.21 on the clock. Second free throw by Marley is up, and this one also off the flange, no good, but Wadlow gets the rebound, and reaching in to try to rip it away. It's Bracken County forcing a jump ball, but Harrison County will get possession. Billy Hatfield back in the game. She saw some action in the first half from her own baseline. Nope, first, another sub for Bracken is Kaylee Sharp returns to the floor. Hicks will inbounds the ball from her own baseline. Gets it in the hands of Hudgens on the wing. Back to Hicks in the corner. Hicks wraparound pass to Wadlow. Emma, hook shot, no good. A little too hard off the glass. And Kaylee Sharp will get the rebound as we come up the floor. We're going to have the ball knocked out of bounds by Harrison County. So Bracken County will maintain possession. Well, do you have a big group to feed? The Beast Pizza is great for birthdays and parties. Just dial 235-7627 right now. 
That's two, three, five. Snap. Very good. Very good. Shows improvement. Good job. With the basketball inside the arc on the left side is Kaylee Sharp. She'll get it over on the right side to Archibald. Now in the corner, Ella Johnson back on the wing. She'll find Archibald from the right elbow. Jump shot good, and she's fouled. And with 27 points now, she'll go to the line. That's Archibald to try and get the old-fashioned three-point play. She makes the score 62 to 27 with 6.44 left. Archibald from the line today is 2-4-3. Free throw up and good. Gives her 28 on the night. And we'll have a continuous clock from here on out with Harrison County trailing now by 36. Gives full court pressure. A pass over on the far sideline to Banks. Banks gets the ball to Hudgens. Now to Risa Heimlich, who's in the game, 5'8 sophomore. Shot put up, no good. Kennedy Howard's putback is also no good after she got the offensive rebound, but it goes off of the Lady Bears. So, oh, nope, they're going to say it was off of Harrison County. So give the ball back to Bracken. Checking in for Harrison County, Haley Thomas. Thomas, a 5'3 sophomore who has yet to score this season. So we've got our JV team in there now. From the left elbow, Ella Johnson's shot is no good, and the aforementioned Haley Thomas gets the rebound. In the front court with the basketball, Heimlich is going to be tied up by Kaylee Sharp. Possession arrow keeps it in Harrison County's hands. As checking in for Bracken will be Jenna Colvin. Colvin, a 5'2 freshman, averaging .9 points per game. Inbounds pass comes to Thomas. Thomas gives the ball to Banks. Banks on the left side, steps inside the arc. Now at the left elbow, passes it to Hatfield. Hatfield, a left-handed shot, no good. And the rebound is going to be pulled out of there by Bauer. Into the front court with the basketball comes number 35, being tracked by Howard. Now Bauer in the corner. Here's a three fired up and no good with Hatfield coming up with the rebound. Now as we come up the floor. Checking in for Harrison County will be Taylor Florence. Florence, a 5'3", eighth grader, averaging .3 points per game. Ends up that was a turnover on Harrison County. So from her own baseline, Archibald gets the ball to Bauer. Point blank range shot is good. 11 points now for Brianna Bauer. Makes the score 65. 227, and now another steal by Bracken County going up for the shot was Kendall Johnson. Her shot's no good, but she's fouled by Heimlich. Timeout, Harrison County. It will be a full timeout, so we'll take it as well. 436 left to go, your score. Bracken County 65, Harrison County 27. You're listening to Philly Basketball on WCYN Sports. Already out of timeout, Harrison County will be facing full court pressure. Lisa Heimlich. Oh no, we got the free throw yet. I forgot about that. Uh, Kendall Johnson at the line on the year. She is a 41% free throw shooter. Looking for her first point of the night. Free throw up and good. Extends her team's lead to 66 to 27. Make it 67 to 27. With that made free throw there as well. 
Four and a half left to go. Here's a pass that goes beyond its intended receiver on the Harrison County side of the floor. Another couple of subs coming in for Bracken. We got Jordan Aarons, 5'7", sophomore, averaging 1.4. Also, Ella Burton in the game. She's a 5'7", sophomore, averaging 1.2. With the basketball across the timeline comes Kendall Johnson. Kendall waits for her people to get where they're supposed to be. Now to the left side to Kaylee Sharp. Kaylee Sharp in the corner finds Burton for three. No good. Offside rebound is going to be a tie-up. Nope, a foul is going to be called. Coming in the game for Harrison County, Naomi Farrar Laws. Farrar Laws, a 5'7", 8th grader, looking for her first ever varsity points. Florence will bring the ball into the front court. Gets it to the left side to Thomas. Thomas down low to Laws. Knocked away, but Thomas is there to get the loose ball. Now her pass is intended for Howard is going to be picked off. Steal by Kaylee Sharp. On the baseline in the front court, Colvin gets it on the wing. Shot blocked by Heimlich, but with the rebound. Shot put up no good by number two, whatever that is. And now that was actually Jenna Colvin who had that rebound. On the second rebound, it's going to go out of bounds off of the Lady Bears, so Harrison County will get possession. Three minutes left to go, 67 to 27, your score. Florence with the basketball at the top of the key, and the paint of floater off the glass is good. Taylor Florence gets her name into the scorebook on that runner. Makes it 67 to 29 with 2.40 left. Here's a long three, good by Kaylee Sharp. Sharp makes the score 70 to 29 with that tray. With 231 left. Here's a leaner put up by Florence. No good. And on the rebound, it is going to be Jenna Colvin. Up front on a race out. A shot put up is no good by Aaron's. Ball will go out of bounds, though, on Harrison County. From her own baseline to trigger the inbounds pass will be Kaylee Sharp. Gets it on the wing now to Kendall Johnson. Kendall Johnson back to Kaylee Sharp. Her 10-footer is no good, and Florence will get another rebound. Harrison County will have the basketball. They've been here for Farmers since 1916, and they're here for you now. Farm Credit in America. Contact Mike Furnish at 859-254-2741 or visit hefarmcredit.com. Florence across the timeline. Gets on the left side to Thomas. Thomas' pass is knocked away, but Howard gets the loose ball. Now a pass intended for Heimlich goes out of bounds over across the way from us. Cynthia Hardy's wants you to visit them for breakfast, lunch, or dinner on US 27 South. They've got the best burgers in town. That's Hardy's in Cynthiana. 112 left to go. Bracken County with the big lead in the ball. They've led all the way and led big. From the right elbow, jump shot by Kendall Johnson is no good. And Heimlich will come away with the rebound. And she's tied up. Possession arrow will give the ball back to the Lady Bears. Let's see. Coming in now, Jaslyn Smith. Jaslyn Smith, a 5'9 sophomore, averaging a point a game. Number 13, Sophie Bach. Here's a pass down low, put up and good by Jaslyn Smith. So gets in the game and almost instantaneously gets her name in the scorebook. 72 to 29, just 49 seconds left. Harrison down, Howard with the basketball. Moves it in between the circles, now reverses, gets it back to Thomas. Thomas down low to Laws, puts it up and in. Naomi Farrar Laws gets the points to make it a 72 to 31 score with 30 seconds left. Here's a pass down on the baseline that gets away with the loose ball picked up by Bracken. Kaylee Sharp has it now, looks over to the bench, moves it up top where she's tracked by Thomas. She'll hand it off to Colvin. Now Colvin is going to be fouled by Thomas. Oh, the Haley's first. 11 seconds left from the far sideline, inbounding the ball. Inbounds pass comes to Kaylee Sharp. 
Sharp will just dribble out the clock as it goes down to zero. So your final score here on the Hilltop tonight, Bracken County 72, Harrison County 31. Harrison County falls for the fifth consecutive game and now has a record of 9 and 20. Meanwhile, Bracken County wins their fifth straight and improves to 14 and 12. It was a no doubter all the way, folks, when Bracken County mainly behind four first quarter threes by Nicole Archibald raced out to a 20 to 2 lead and were never headed. All right, we invite you to join us for our post game show. We'll go over all the scoring and stats from tonight's game as well as have a chat with a member of the Harrison County coaching staff. We'll also name our Judy Construction Company player of the game. All that coming up after this timeout. But once again, here on the Hilltop, your final score, Bracken County 72, Harrison County 31. 